In this video, we will discuss the hydrostatic forces in the curved surfaces and first case we will discuss the liquid above the surface. Let us consider a one tank and this one is a liquid and let us say this is one curved surface. So, I am drawing here any irregular shape of curved surface and let us say the width of this curved surface to the plane is equals to W. So, this is the curved surface. On this curved surface, the weight of liquid is really present. That is the liquid is above the surface. Let us consider here one small section. This section has certain depth equal to H. So, H is the depth of fluid over this surface and is a very very small section. Over this surface, over this surface, the hydrostatic force will act in this direction which is normal to this plane. To analyze this surface, we will take it outside. So, let us consider the area of this small plate here. That is a small area on this side here is dA. And let us say this is a small force acting on this one is equals to dA. So, I can resolve this area dA into this component equals to Ay and this value is equals to I will say to Ax. Actually, I can resolve this force into two components. One component will act like this and one component will act like this. So, I will say this component is equals to Fy component and this component is equals to Fx component. So, we have x component acting on the area Ay which is perpendicular to x value and Ax is that plane on which dFi will act. So, dFi is perpendicular to Ax. So, this component has the force equals to pressure multiplied by area and pressure is given by the column of height h that equals to rho multiplied by g multiplied by h multiplied by dA. Suppose this angle is theta then the value of Ax will be equals to dA cos theta value of Ay is equals to dA sin theta. So, this angle is theta so this angle is also equals to theta and this compound is perpendicular to this. So, this compound is same as theta and this compound is 90 minus theta. This horizontal line and this vertical line is perpendicular. So, this component is also equal to theta and this one is 90 minus theta. Here this fx, f is making an angle of theta with the vertical. So, this angle is same as theta. So, this component is, this component is dfy which is equals to df, this one is df into cos theta and this component is dfx equals to df into sin theta and we know df equal to rho into g into h into dA. So, we can write dFy as this value df into cos theta and we will replace df equal to rho g into h into dA. So, we have dFy is equal to df which is equal to rho into g into h into dA that is the first four terms and this cos theta is this cos theta. Now, dA into cos theta is nothing but our dAx. So, this one is basically dX and this one is dA y because you have taken the elemental area. So, if you see this figure and this one is same as dx and this is a height h. So, dx multiplied by h is nothing but the weight of liquid above the so we can write h into dv, dx is this volume that is equals to dv volume dv here and the weight of this water is acting vertically downward. So, we have a direction is downward direction. So, total vertical force is nothing but the sum of all these vertical forces that is integral of df by that is integral of rho g into dv. If I density of the liquid does not constant changes with respect to the height that is we assume the density the fluid is incompressible and g is constant. So, we can take out rho g outside. So, we left with rho g into integral of dv which is nothing but rho g into v and rho g into v is nothing but the weight of liquid above the this total area. So, whatever this total area here, so whatever this column is here, the entire weight of this liquid will act vertically downward that is called as your Fp. We can also call this one as the gravity force or we can call it as weight of liquid vertically above the curved surface and you have to take the So, Fp will be equals to rho into g into v equal to w. So, what V? V is this volume that is this area whatever we are interested about this one up to the free surface. We define Fv is equal to weight of liquid vertically above the curved surface and extending up to the free surface. So, we have this curved surface and the total weight above this one up to the free surface is called as the Fv. So, weight of that one is called as Fv. I will discuss the horizontal component. For horizontal component we have to calculate dfx and dfx is basically df multiplied by sin theta. So, we have dfx equal to df sin theta, but what is df? But df is equals to rho to g into h into dA and dA into sin theta is nothing but dAy and this time the dAy is the vertical area. 
so this one is the same case of vertical plane so to find out the total horizontal force we have to integrate this so fh equals to integral of dfx so we have rho into g into h into day now here if i assume that my fluid is incompressible so i can take out rho common and g common you left with rho into g into integral of h day h into dy ay can be replaced as h bar into total area in y direction so what is this area ay so you have to look from this side the water is present on this side we should look from this side if you look from this side over this area so this area in a vertical form will be represented as this area so this one is called as our projected area ay that is this term so ay is the horizontal projection so this one is called as horizontal projection of this projection of a curved surface onto the vertical plane and this one is vertical plane so you have to look this in this direction and h bar is the distance of the centroid of this projected area so whatever this uh, area you have got you look at your centroid and you look at this measure the distance of this one from three surface so this distance will be called as h bar and you have to always measure the distance from free surface level, which is open to the atmosphere okay let's consider the another case here that is the second case in which the water is present the imaginary water is present so let's consider the we have a water level on, we have a fluid on this side and this one is a free surface and some water is present on the bottom so we have a curved surface here this one is a curved surface and this time the liquid is present below whereas on this curved surface the liquid is present above so these two are different situation but as far as the approach is considered approach is remain same now since the liquid is present on this side and this liquid is present below it the hydrostatic force act in a upward direction so it will be acting in this direction the direction is different and is always normal now the pressure at this point there is a variation and the pressure at this point is the same variation in both the situation in this case the pressure was acting like and this is the same depth equal to x so actually the pressure quantity remains same suppose we neglect the thickness of this one so to understand the effect of this one i will consider here one imaginary so this one is imaginary fluid of height equal to h again consider one elemental area at this x at a depth equal to h so let's consider this point at a depth equal to h and the pressure at this point in all direction remains same and hence we can say that this pressure acting is negative of this pressure so if i say this pressure is p and this pressure is p dash then if this pressure is p dash and this pressure is p in this direction so we have value of p dash is same as minus of p and therefore the these equations the discussion done earlier are same as the discussion applied for this one so only thing that this vertical force will act vertically upward so it is same value as rho into g into v only thing that the direction will be upward or we can say that this the weight of liquid will act vertically upward so the vertical for fe is almost same definition that we are used for liquid above the surface but only difference is that this is imaginary liquid and this is the weight of liquid actually present and therefore the component will act vertically downward way this fe will act vertically upward and as far as the horizontal component are there there are no changes in the horizontal component you have to again project this on the horizontal surface and calculate so projection of this one on the horizontal surface will be up to this point so again project it measure the centroid of this distance this area that is the projected area from free surface and calculate your force using rho into g into h bar into ay where ay is the projected area in the last video we have discussed the two cases in first case we have the liquid really present in that case we have given the vertical force is acting vertically downward is the product of density multiplied by g multiplied by the volume displaced from gate up to the free surface and if the liquid is present below this that is the imaginary column you have to take and your answer will remain same but only thing that the forces will act vertically upward in both situations you have to calculate the horizontal force as rho into g into h bar into a projected now we'll going to discuss the third case where the whatever the curved surface here is there that will going to displace a certain quantity of water right now it is not going to displace any quantity of water because we assume the thickness of this plate is very very small the third case is slightly different than the first two cases here we have a the curved surface and here also curved surface entire tank is filled with the liquid here and in this one we will introduce any curved surface but this curved surface will be like this let's say any irregular shape here and if we introduce this curved surface like this then whatever the water is inside will be get displaced because of this one and let's say this is a surface here so this time your curved surface has displaced certain quantity of water now because of this one we have a situation here that this column of liquid is really present whereas this column of liquid is 
imaginary column that that is this situation so we have come across combined situation when we have the surface is like this so this part here so this part is our the first case where the liquid is really present that is this situation whereas this part here is the second situation where the liquid is present below so this is a special case this we can get here by uh, putting a by placing a cylindrical object a cylindrical type of gate or some uh, sphere here we can place in that case you will get a volume displace so in that case we what we do is that this is a volume displace so volume displace is nothing but what buoyant force so i will just show you how to calculate the vertical force first so first of all consider here this cross section and this cross section is known to us and perpendicular to this we have certain width so let's say the volume of this one that is volume displace we can say volume displace is equals to this cross section that equals to a multiplied by the width perpendicular to the plane of paper in that case the fe will be equals to the buoyant force and buoyant force is simply given by rho rho multiplied by g multiplied by volume displace naturally the buoyant this force is same as buoyant force so this will act vertically upward and how are you going to calculate the horizontal force so horizontal force will be same as the previous calculation you have to project this area entirely on this plane so this is the projected area from this point to this point once you know the projected area once you know the projected area find out centroid of this and measure the distance of this one from this point that is pre surface and let's say this distance equals to h bar so horizontal component will be equals to rho multiplied by g multiplied by this h bar multiplied by area projected so identify your situation your situation is either this that is the weight liquid is really present and this one is the thin surface and does not displaces any volume we have second situation where the liquid where the gate will not displace any type of liquid but the water is present below this that is the imaginary column and in third case we have a surface like this because of insertion of that surface some volume will be get displaced which was previously present in the tank in that case compute your force by using the buoyant and the buoyant force is nothing but the weight of liquid displaced so calculate the what is the volume displaced and then multiplied by rho g that is the density of this liquid and as far as fh is considered every time in all three situation fh calculations are remain same whatever the area get you get project that area from the liquid side onto the vertical wall so project this this is water side project this area on the vertical side help find out the area projected locate the centroid measure the distance of centroid from free surface that is h bar calculate this area we will get rho h fh equal to rho into g into h bar multiplied by projected area